Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Daniel Umstead. I am the host of the RNG Radio Show as well as owner of the Robert and Daniel Group. On today's show, uh, we were actually going to be going over teaching the kids financial literacy. In addition, um, we're going to be talking about job references as far as how you should how to ask for them, um, and how they should be going on your resume. In addition, we got some tips from some top, top realtors um, it, when it comes to listings, as well as um, Jackie Ina, who is going to be our queen for today on uh, the King and Queen section. So um, let's get started. Starting off first for credit repair. For those that don't know, um, and if you're just tuning in for the first time and need some information on building up your credit, fixing your credit, give me a call 267-702-3756. I'd be more than happy. So these past week and a half, it, it feels like two weeks. It actually would be over two weeks because if I'm doing this five days a week, um, then uh, we would definitely be past the uh, 12 day marker because there are 12 that's right, five, five, and two, 12 services that are included with your credit repair program. I don't know about those other folks out here, but this last one, this last one is definitely a wake up call, especially if you got kids or little ones that you are taking care of. So the last but not least um, service that is included with your credit repair program service. This is with me. This is with me. I don't know about those other folks, but this is definitely with me. The service that's included is called the YFL Family Mint. So Family Mint is an award-winning online management and goal-setting application that offers an engaging way for kids to learn financial responsibility. We're in the summertime, folks, so signing up, you telling me, Dan, that I'm getting life insurance for free. You're telling me, Dan, that I'm able to sell, set up a will and trust. You're telling me, Dan, that you're also gonna be fixing my credit. And you're telling me that I'm also getting services to make sure my kids don't make the same financial mistakes that I did growing up? Sign me up right now because for no more than three dollars a day this is what you're getting i can't believe it myself so uh what does this include as you ask so the yfl family mint online program utilizes a complete online family mint application in your own home or classroom and all you do is create a personalized account sign in and begin using the program immediately um, there's also newsletters for children that they can read, which can be viewed on a computer or print. Um, the classroom program, uh, this pro workbook program is outlined with a complete instructor's guide, implementation checklist, and letters to teachers and parents on how to integrate the family mint into a classroom setting. Now, as far as age group, I feel that, you know, this should be applied to all ages because you definitely don't want to get to an age where, you know, you're in your 30s, you're in your 40s, and you're learning, oh my gosh, the difference between spending money now or spending money later, or waiting on a purchase, or just simply uh, understanding what a basic interest rate is. So whether they're five or whether they're 18, um, your children should be knowing, and even three years old, goo goo ga ga, money, 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 all right? So, or at least the responsibilities of it. So, but the program itself is designed for kids grades five and up, so 10 and up. Um, and this new program guides your children through a series of exercises, which will add depth to intelligence understanding while enhancing their experience with the Family Mints um, online program. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dan, I already told you, I have the money to sign up. Dan, I already told you, this isn't gonna be beneficial for me because my credit score is at 820, but how can I teach my kids about financial literacy? Well, that's all the purpose of you being on the show, folks, and watching me right now. So, the article I have pulled up, uh, and this comes from US News, money and there are seven lessons to teach your kids for financial literacy um there's actually a whole month about it apparently april is financial literacy month and the perfect time to start teaching your kids how to manage money is now so please do not wait till april of 2021 to teach your kids about financial literacy you can actually start these things today so the first one um as soon as it loads up here the first one <laughs> Uh, that is the difference between wants and needs. Now, I know a lot of you ladies out there might be thinking, but I really want these shoes, but I really need these shoes. No, 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 you don't understand. These shoes must go with this purse and this dress in order to have a great outfit on Tuesday. And fellas, don't think I forgot about you guys. I know, 
I know, I know. Listen, when we go to the restaurant, it's like extra six wings ain't going to be that bad. You know, that extra beer ain't going to be that bad. You know, and my girlfriend gets on me, future fiance, future queen, gets on me about this all the time. Like, I'm always saying when I do go out uh, to eat, I'm usually like, nah, babe, I need something to fill me up right then and there. And it's like, well, that's probably what you're going to do whole billing. So, scratching that out, because, you know, I don't have memories about that. But, um, <clears throat> you have to understand the difference between your wants and your needs, you know, and, and that has a lot to do with your pockets um, and for the long run as well. So don't feel that it's like, oh, no, I need this right now. No, you don't understand. This must be a need right now. No, you getting water for your household uh, because you don't want your kids drinking soda, that would be a need. Uh, you getting the nutrition and value when it comes to food in your household rather than wanting a bunch of potato chips and snacks and such, that, that's, that's the need. So understand your needs and wants and balance it out. And the best way to test whether it's a need or want is look 24 hours in the future. Hey, for the fellas, if you got these extra 12 wings, what is that going to do in the future for you? It's as simple as that. Ladies, if you see these red pair of shoes that for whatever reason used to be $90, now they're $80, but you got a coupon from $15, which brings it down to $65, and then you know a girlfriend that just sent you a 20% off coupon that brings it down to $13 off of that $65, and now you're down to $52, and they're like, but it's a great deal. See for yourself if that $52 can be used for something else towards the future, because you should always be thinking about your future when it comes to your money. So understand the difference between your wants and your needs. Uh, number two, every purchase has an opportunity cost. So an opportunity cost is pretty much saying that, hey, I could pretty much go to someplace cheaper. Let's look at um, Krispy Kreme, for example, you know, and Dunkin' Donuts and even Wawa. At Wawa, the donuts are maybe, what, about like uh, around a dollar. Meanwhile, for whatever reason, Dunkin' Donuts increased their prices. Ain't going to get on about that. If America runs on Dunkin'. You no, know, America runs on being broke. I keep going to Dunkin' Donuts. We're not going to get into that Dunkin' Donuts. Be fine, because stock is doing pretty good but uh for those that are looking at the opportunity costs for them they're a little bit higher and then for Krispy Kreme you know they got those specialty donuts they look at like a dollar sixty dollar fifty so the opportunity cost would be going to Wawa because if I'm at Wawa compared to going to Krispy Kreme I'm saving myself that 70 cents now if I'm willing to buy a donut um every 30 days um, out of the month and everything like that, that's close to $20. So you're looking at an additional $20, you know, per month if you were to buy, uh, let's say, a donut from Krispy Kreme. Now, I'm not saying that everybody's out here buying a donut every single day for Krispy Kreme. Otherwise, if you do, you're going to be looking something like this. What I am saying is that I need you to look as like, hey, I'm spending a dollar sixty on a donut. Where else can I be using that money at? So that's the same thing you need to be teaching your kids. If they see something that they're interested in or like, see where that money else could be going towards their future. And again, apply the 24-hour rule. If it is something that is must, it is a need right then and there, uh, definitely you know pursue it and go after it. Number three, the repercussions of making a money mistake. A. I know that I made money mistakes. I definitely know that the folks listening right now have made money mistakes. So understand that you need to teach the kids the repercussions of making a money mistake. And something as simple as buying those shoes, something as simple as getting those extra wings, because you never know what surprise costs could come in the long run. You know, explain to your kids, hey, a flat tire just to get replaced, well, especially around here. I don't know about certain areas, but around here, to get a tire replaced, just a decent, regular used tire is around between $40 and $50, depending on your car or your vehicle. So if you were to buy those extra wings, if you were to get those pair of shoes, ladies and gents, um, that money, God forbid, if something comes up uh, with, you know, a, an emergency, such as the uh, car with the tire, that money's going away. So the repercussions of that is now trying to figure out like, oh, what can I use now? Oh, wait, I still have that credit card. Man, I'm really trying to pay down that credit card. Well, this is an emergency. Well, them shoes and them wings were an emergency, but all of a sudden now that because the repercussions of it, instead of you utilizing that money to save, you're now having to utilize that money for an emergency such as this. All right. 
Number four, how to delay gratification. So parents can help children develop the skill by not purchasing every item they request. So stop spoiling your kids. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Okay, even more powerful, uh, maybe avoiding impulse purchases yourself and explain to children while shopping that you're not buying something you might like because you don't need it at that moment. Again, if you apply 24 hour rule to all purchases that you make and looking at it, you will turn out so much better. And you'll be looking at the end of the week like, hmm, I actually saved some money this week. I guess that 24-hour rule from the RNG radio show by Daniel Umstead with the owner of the Robin Nathaniel Group really helped out. I should give him a call and thank him. And if you wanted to, 267-702-3756. All right, now, uh, number five, how credit works. Ladies and gentlemen, I just told you about the YFL uh Mint family program. So, if you want to teach your kids, sign them up. If not, you can uh, Google articles all day about teaching your kids about credit, but they do need to know something now. Number six, time helps money grow. Now, the best way for that is to explain to your kids stocks. Dan, I don't know anything about stocks. Well, you do in a sense, because if uh, you've been shopping at these big box stores, such as Walmart, Target, uh, even Dollar Tree, or even Dollar General, you can explain to them by Googling and looking up their stock symbol and showing what 10 years ago, how much their stock was worth, and then looking at it now. So uh, explaining to them, especially if they're five, they're like, hey, listen, if we put $10 into the Dollar Tree stock, how we did this 10 years ago before you were born, it would have been worth this amount. It's basic math, folks, and that's why time helps money grow. Now, time doesn't help money grow if your $10 is just sitting in your wallet over the course of 10 years. No, time helps money grow when you're actually putting that money towards your use and you're utilizing it as a tool. Now, if you want to know some more information about stocks, this is free excuse me, this is free advice. I'd be more than happy to assist. Give me a call, 267-702-3756. I set up my mom on utilizing Cash App with stocks. I'm pretty sure I can show the world on how to use it. In addition, if you don't have Cash App already, you and I both get an additional $5. That's right, $5. All right. <laughs> Number seven. Um, did I skip over it? Yes how money works in the real world. So, and this is something I definitely explained to my son, you know, in regards to a teaching him, because uh, he's 10 years old and he's already asking me about love and girlfriends. And I'm like, no, 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 this can't be happening. Calm down, Dan. He's a young man and he's turning into a gentleman. So he wants to know everything now. So I'm like, woosa, got a woosa about it completely. But Teaching your kids, not so much about the love part, but teaching them like, hey, especially if they're in their teen years and everything like that, let them know, hey, listen, when you look towards having a relationship, boy, girl, 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 boy, boy, doesn't matter. Bills need to get paid. So you need to teach your kids, hey, this is how much you're going to be looking at as a cell phone. This is how much you're going to be looking at for the electricity bill. This is how much you're going to be looking at for food in your household. This is how much you're going to be looking at for gas in your car. This is how much insurance costs. This is how much your car payment costs. This is how much your rent costs, your mortgage costs, insurance costs for your house, and insurance costs for uh, your car, and so on and so forth. So you need to be breaking these things down to your kids. When you budget, and if you're not budgeting, you should be budgeting. So when you budget, you should be having your kids come in. There's going to be no difference in them knowing how much you make now compared to knowing how much you made last month. They need to understand that so that way when they get older, they'll be like, oh, wait, you know what? My mom and dad did tell me this, or my grandma did tell me this, or I remember my big brother definitely did show me this, or my little sister definitely did give me some advice on this. So that way, because... In the end, folks, it still takes a village to raise a child. It even still takes 100 villages uh, to raise an adult. So let's start off by teaching them, engaging them, and letting them know, hey, listen, this is the real world, and this is what you're going to be expecting from it. All right? Now, on to our next segue. I want to talk to you guys about job references. Now, this came up uh, because uh, my beautiful queen is uh, – 
looking for a job up in the Philadelphia area. And folks, I'm putting this out there right now. If anybody knows of any property management companies that is in need of a leasing consultant, hit me up. But probably by the time you see this video, she might already be working. Oh, we already in that money. Already in that money. No, she, she'll probably just be working before we get to the money. So it's going to be a year for that. Because making a million takes a while, folks. So uh, for reference checks, though, um, the conversation came up as far as who she should be utilizing. So, and it really just comes down to a question. Now, they have a lot of tips on here, and this is an article from Allison Doyle, November 20, 2019, from thebalancedcareers.com. What you should know about job references, how to get and use them for employment. Let me just be straight up with you. Anybody that you know as a friend or a colleague or a supervisor all goes in one category. Because as the employer, moi, when we do call and we inquire and we ask, um, hi, how do you know Teresa Hughes? Oh, she was my colleague at such and such a job. Do they need to know that she was your colleague at such and such a job? No, because a lot of our conversations usually only happen maybe two to three minutes. Most of the time, the ringing part takes longer than the whole conversation that I do have uh, with folks utilizing for references. So when you're grabbing references or when you're taking on references, uh, be sure to just ask friends and family, or not so much family, but definitely friends or former colleagues that know about your work and can speak on your behalf. That is pretty much it, folks. There's really no other science to it. But if you want to dig into the nitty gritty, let's go with the first part, employment references. So employment references are former colleagues, friends, and or supervisors who can attest to your skills and qualifications. That's it, folks. That's it. How to select and use references. Talk to your colleagues or former supervisors, um, especially if you're looking to leave a job, and ask them, hey, when I do uh, find opportunities in the future, do you mind if I put you down as a reference? That's just the breaking ice point. Now, you still need to go back and ask them, but we'll get to that in a second. So when you're selecting and using your references, just make sure, hey, is this person going to spend a good two minutes talking about how great I did at the job? That's it, folks. Number three, how to ask for a reference. Again, like I said, when you are leaving a job or somebody that you used to work with, all you're doing is asking them, hey, I'm applying for such and such job at such and such place. Do you mind if I put you down as a reference? Simple as that, folks. Number four, types of reference letters. Now, for the reference letters, those are pretty much the ones that need like a letter of recommendation or letter of reference, uh, especially if you're going for those big corporate jobs or even if you're applying to grad school, law school, you know, those, um, you know, the next level schools and such, and even maybe uh, going for your bachelor's for college. But for the reference letters, to make it easy, folks, you Google sample reference letters for whatever it's for, whether it be for a job, whether it be for grad school, what have you. Google sample reference letters for, and then you get the format, and then once you have the format, you ask your colleague, former supervisor, hey, I need actually a letter of reference uh, for this particular job. Would you mind writing me one? Yeah, sure. What, when do you need to have the box? Listen, I actually took care of the work already for you. I already wrote up the letter. I wanted to just know if you could sign off on it. What person is going to say no to that? Tell me. If a person does say no, give me a call so I can give them, so I can give them a call. 267-702-3756. Now, uh, when you use professional references, folks, your reference is your reference. So whether it be a former supervisor or a colleague, um, you need to understand, you know, if this person is going to give you a good, valued uh, reference for you. So I'll give you an example for people. And I was looking at this, you know, as far as tips getting into law school, um, a person's like, oh, can I use a judge? Uh, my mom's boss's friend um, worked with them and uh, what you call it? They were a judge, you know, so I wanted to see if that would be good. Okay. Did you work with this judge? Nah, but they know a lot about me. Well, if they don't know that much about you, they want to be a good reference. So somebody who's a former colleague that worked with you for five years, seeing how you operate, let's say working in a restaurant or even in an office, is going to do a damn better job than, you know, some judge that you could just put down just because of their title. So don't always go for title. Always go for, um, you know, how much that individual knows you. And in addition, add on a position. So something as basic as a former colleague slash friend you know, all the way up to somebody who's a supervisor or CEO. 
Number six, when to use character and personal references. Kind of goes back to the same one, folks. You know, you need to figure out who is going to be the best benefit um, in speaking on your behalf. And then uh, last one, when employees conduct reference checks. In my experience, and I will let you know right away, uh, when I conduct reference checks is honestly uh, the moment that they have a job interview. So as a recruiter, because I work with the staffing agency, typically when I do it is the moment that I know that they have a um, job interview going on the line, and then that's when I reach out for the references. Now, if you're looking at a direct employer, most times they'll do it immediately right after the interview or um, once you do put in your application, but they honestly should be asking and inquiring with you first because a lot of you may be wanting to put down your current supervisor or your current employee. So getting that bad rep or like, oh yeah, she's still working here. I'm surprised she's looking for a new job. She's doing so well here that might get kind of jumbled and mumbled and then you're looking at yourself like, man, I should have waited. So be sure that, you know, with the reference checks, that honestly should be communication between you and that future employer. All right, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, references. So um, if you need additional tips on that, give me a call 267-702-3756. I will be more than happy to assist. Now. Real estate time, real estate time. Now, uh, I believe I had used this person before, Emile Le Eplatinier, uh, December 16, 2019 from theclose.com. And he uh, has an article, How to Get Listings, 18 Luxury Listing Agents Spill Their Secrets. Now, am I gonna be going over these 18 uh, secrets? No, no, you got a pen, pad, uh, phone, tablet, something, computer, look these up on your own. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm eventually going to get to a point, folks. Every single article that I have looked up will be in the uh, YouTube description uh, below. But uh, for the time being, how did you get your first listing? Uh, this uh, individual, uh, what is his name here? I, ju I just had it. I was looking at it. You are Charlie of the Aaron Kerman Group at Compass. Um, when they had asked him, well, and this individual has done $500 million in sales volume of uh, last year, so I'm assuming 2018 to 2019. Um, if you have one listing, you should walk away with the sale and pick up at least one more listing in the neighborhood. So when you get your first listing, when you, or I should say how you approach your first listing is uh, with this gentleman, he actually just honestly went across the street and talked to his neighbor. Hey, uh, do you mind if uh, we could test the market and put up your house for listing? Here's the thing, folks. Putting up a house for listing doesn't guarantee that, oh, this person is going to be looking to sell their house. Oh, this person definitely wants to sell their house. Oh, I'm definitely making 6% 6 commission off of this or 5%, 7%, what have you. No, putting up a house for listing just simply means that you're putting up the house for listing and you're inquiring about offers. You know, a lot of people might put up their car for sale but might realize that, oh, you know what, I actually need this car. So understand that when you're putting up a listing, don't think that it's like, oh, now that I have a listing, I have a sale. No, understand that now that I have a listing, I'm able to brand myself more. So going around still in the neighborhood and walking around and asking and checking on folks. Listen, uh, when you are showing yourself as a realtor, when you're showing yourself of your skill and craft, people are going to inquire more and look at you more saying like, what's this person really got to offer? So folks, take the time, you know, to walk around your neighborhood, check out your neighborhood, especially my fellow realtors, you know, and that's the best place to start. All right. Um, the next one, Laura Cow, associate broker and team leader with the Douglas Ellie Mont um, out in Manhattan Group, uh, top 2% agent company wide and ranked as one of the top teams in the US by Real Trends. Laura Cow and her team consistently list and sell high end Manhattan luxury, new developments in real estate. So, how she got her first one, she was living on the Upper West Side when I got my first sale listing at such and such and sold it for 1.475 million in 2006. Not long after I started my career as a broker assistant. Wow. So um, she pretty much had this, uh, a lot of people coming out after her saying that, you know, she wasn't going to be a good fit for the job. So she honestly just proved them wrong. Um, if you are just starting out today as a new agent, what would you do anything differently? Um, she said, there's not a set standard. 
sellers have more resources and more options, and they do. Redfin, uh, you know, they have Zillow, you have Realtor.com. There's so many resources and places that a seller can go to to sell their house or even just doing it on their own or just simply Googling. Hey, how do I sell my house on my own? So you are dealing with a competition. Um, but um, as she had pretty much put out, if you present yourself as a new agent, you can win over a listing and get the opportunity to do your best work, to grow personally and professionally. At the end of the day, folks, when it comes down to your um, listing, it is a communication. It's not just simply knocking on the door. Hey, can I do your listing? Hey, can I do your listing? Hey, we'll love to do your listing. You know who will be a great realtor for your listing? This guy right here. No, it's about developing that communication. It's about developing that relationship. It's about letting people know, hey, this is what I have to offer for you. Being a brand new agent and assisting you and getting your house up for sale and in addition, getting the best price for you. So, um, a lot of these, um, as I look through it, folks, is, um, you know, developing that um, relationship and knowing what you're doing. So um, I have this, um, there we go, uh, Tika Van Den Herk, uh, Senior Director of Luxury Sales um, out in Douglas Element, Florida. Um, she, um, her advice that she had given out was that um, to always be real and know your stuff. So you know, if you're stuck on a listing or if you're stuck and trying to figure out like how to get that first listing out there, folks, do your research, you know, see what's going on in the market, broadcast what's going on in the market, let people know on social media that you are still a realtor. Even for myself, you know, I hold myself accountable because I only use this platform to discuss real estate and I should be on Instagram discussing it. I should be on Facebook discussing it. I should be on Twitter discussing it. You, everybody should be knowing, hey, this is what Daniel Umstead does. He's a realtor. He's a credit repair specialist. He's a radio show host. He also gives motivation in addition. He does a great Kings and Queens section, section that um, allows uh, us, the African-American community, uh, to realize the true value of who we are when we get there. And so much more. He's also learning uh, Mandarin, Chinese, French, and Spanish. There's so many things that's to me, and I'm pretty sure there's probably double that or not even triple that compared to you folks out there watching. So, uh, folks, just be real and know your stuff getting out there as brand new agents. All right. Now, to end the day, or I should say the moment before we end the day, I'd like to start off with uh, Jackie Ina, who is a beauty expert and advocate. Ina is a beauty expert and activist who has made it her business to see black women represented in the color spectrum of makeup brands. So uh, I'm just going to be reading the blurb here, folks. With a magnetic personality and skin glazed by the gods of smooth complexions, Ina is both a beauty and beauty influencer who's turned her name and knowledge into an international brand. Her YouTube channel is a video bible for more than 3 million Facebook devotees where she deconstructs beauty standards like colorism as she shows her largely black girl fan base how to feel and look like their best possible selves. On and offline, Ina champions uh, diversity and inclusion uh, across the beauty industry, holding brands accountable to make their products pop on darker skin tones and demanding makeup representation for melanated complexion. So Jackie Ina, Queen Jackie Ina, we salute you today and thank you so much uh, for what you're doing for the black community. Now, uh, wrapping up here, folks, uh, the last thing that I definitely want to talk to you about all uh, for those that were listening earlier uh, to the video was in regards to the journey. So I know what you're thinking to yourself. It's a Monday. It's like, damn, I'm really not motivated to do anything. You know, I, I got so many things that I need to do with my business. I got so many things I need to do with my real estate, credit repair, all this stuff. I don't think I'm going to be able to fulfill it all in one day. Folks out there, if you're listening, enjoy the journey. It's okay to take that break. It's okay to say, I'm just doing this one thing today. Uh, back to my queen again. She has told me time and time again, hey, don't feel that you need to accomplish everything in one day. You have your whole life to fulfill. And I'm telling you the same thing, folks. You have your whole life to fulfill in regards to getting to where you need to be at. You know, if you're looking to make a million dollars, hey, set that goal to make a million dollars, whether it be by the end of the year, by the end of next year. But please don't fault yourself or hurt yourself in the process mentally where you're like, oh my gosh, this is a struggle. Hey, 
for those that have been driving as long as me and I'm going on to my late 30s and such, I've definitely hit a lot of potholes in the road. And you're going to hit a lot of potholes in the road when it comes to your business, when it comes to your craft, when it comes to your skill. It's okay. Trust me, it's okay. But enjoy the journey. Enjoy the fact that you did get a pothole. Enjoy the fact that your car did stall on you. Enjoy the fact that, you know, you are having difficulty trying to get this out. You are having difficulty trying to put this print advertisement together to boost you up. It's quite all right. What you don't and what you should not be doing is stopping because of it. Continue on, build and prosper. So, Folks, I leave you with that. And as always, as always, what am I going to tell you? What am I going to tell you? What I always tell you. Stay blessed, my fellow millionaires. Have a great one. Flesled on the beat.